Hello everyone, this is week five of our uh, gate problem solving sessions for physics. And uh, as decided, so we are focusing on uh, four topics that is general aptitude, electromagnetic theory, mathematical physics, and quantum mechanics. So these are the four topics that we would be focusing on. And the aim of these sessions is that we would be taking some uh, questions from previous year's gate physics papers uh, from these four topics and we would be solving them one by one in these sessions and this is the fifth session in uh, this series this is week five and this is a 12 weeks course so every saturday we meet at 1 30 pm for a one hour session and before we proceed uh, i would share some logistical details with you so uh, saturday 1 30 pm that's the class timing uh, one hour session apart from that we have a youtube channel uh, where you can go and um, you can basically subscribe to that channel and you would find videos from the previous session as well as this current session which will be live streamed so i would just share the link of the youtube channel with you people for those of you who are joining us for the first time so that's the youtube channel Apart from the YouTube channel, we also have a Google Drive link, a Google Drive folder. And in this Google Drive folder, we, uh, so I would basically upload uh, these lecture notes that I would be discussing. So I would share the link to the Google Drive. Just give me a second. So every week, the lecture notes are uploaded on uh, Google Drive and you can go and download those lecture notes from there. So I have shared the Google Drive link in the fold uh, in the chat box. So that's the YouTube channel and the Google Drive link. And apart from this, we also have another platform uh, which would be helpful for you people. So this is a Discord server that we have. And on this Discord server, you can join the server and you can pose some questions if you have. And your friends and colleagues and even I am there on the Discord server. So you can basically uh, discuss amongst yourself as well as with me uh, some doubts if you have. So I will share the link to the Discord server as well. So just give me a second. I will put the Discord server link. Are you able to see my screen now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, see. fine. Fine. Sorry for this technical glitch. Means I don't know why today my device was not connecting. Uh, it was working fine up until now, but somehow, uh, even today I had connected, it was working fine, but somehow it got disconnected. So we will start now. So someone from the last week had asked me a question about Levi Sevita symbols and how to write cross products and curls in Levi Sevita uh, notation. So this was pertaining to this particular question from electromagnetic theory that we did in the last class. So this is not a question from this class. This is a question from the last class. And uh, as you can see, this is a question in which we need to find out which particular um, vector uh, potential is the one which gives us a uniform magnetic field uh, along the z direction and we are given a bunch of options and how do we do it well we find the curl of a for each of these cases and that would give us 
uh, some expression for B and then we see whether it is uniform field in the Z direction or not. So that is how we uh, do it. And uh, so how we write in the levi sevita notation, uh, the cross product and curl is what we will uh, look at in this lecture. Just a brief uh, description of the levi sevita symbols. So the levi sevita symbol is in the tensor notation given as follows. So if you have for three indices, because here we are dealing with, uh, typically we will deal with three indices. So this is a levi sevita symbol for three indices. And this takes the value plus one if your i, j, k are in the cyclic order, i, j, k are in the cyclic order of one, two, three, or two, three, one, or three, one, two. And this takes the value negative one if i, j, k uh, is three, two, one. This is uh, the anti-clockwise order if you want to think of it. Or two, one, three, and it is zero if any two indices are equal. If i equal to j, or j equal to k, or k equal to i. So this is your uh, definition of the Levi Sevita symbol, and this is for three indices. If you have two indices, if you are in two D, then you have simply i j, and again it takes plus one if i j is 1 2 it takes negative 1 if i comma j is 2 comma 1 and 0 if the indices are equal so this is the definition of the levi sevita symbol and uh, it is plus 1 when you if you have an even permutation and negative 1 if you have an odd permutation so that's the definition so if you have even permutation, so this is plus one for even permutation of the indices. And negative one for odd permutation of the indices. So this is the levi sevita symbol that we have. And then uh, using this notation, you can write your cross products and curls. So cross product in the Levi Sevita symbol is given as follows. So this is how you would denote your cross product. And then you have curl. So that's your curl where, okay, let me remove this. So where this del i is basically uh, the partial derivative with respect to the coordinate i. So that's how you would write your cross product and curl in the levi sevita uh, symbol notation. And uh, however, uh, even with this notation, you do have to solve for each of these uh, parts A, B, C, and D one by one and check them whether they satisfy B is equal to del cross A, giving us B as a uniform magnetic field. There is no way you can get around this um, technique of trying to put in each of these values and checking whether you get the desired uniform field or not. Someone in the last class was asking about Levi Sevita symbols. So that's why I am discussing, uh, briefly discussing this Levi Sevita symbol in this lecture. 
and um, someone basically wanted to know if there is some shorter way of trying to solve this instead of uh, brute force trying to put in each of the uh, each of the options and then trying to see if it satisfies or not so unfortunately there is no other way other than trying to brute force uh, put in each of these options so that was uh, a brief uh, intro about the levy civita symbols now we move to this week's content so this week we start off as uh, as like always we discuss few questions from general aptitude and then few questions from either one of the topics mathematical physics electromagnetic theory and quantum mechanics so uh, this time also we will start with a few questions on uh, general aptitude so this is the first question over here for general aptitude it says the variable cost of manufacturing a product varies according to the equation v is equal to 4 q where q is the quantity produced the fixed cost f of production of the same product reduces with q according to the equation f equal to 100 over q how many units should be produced to minimize the total cost so it's a very simple uh, problem on minimizing uh, on minimization so here we are given some equations and we need to find out for what value of q we will have the uh, minimized expression so let us start by writing the expressions so total cost total cost of production of the product is given as t is equal to v plus f that's the variable cost plus the fixed cost and then what we have is or uh, we put in the expressions so this is 4 times q plus 100 over q that's the individual expressions for v and uh, q so that's our total cost then what we need to do for minimizing minimization would be achieved by the derivative of t with respect to q and setting it equal to zero and how do we know it's a minimum and not a maximum that would be by checking the second derivative so if the second derivative if the first derivative is zero and the second derivative is positive then what you have is a, a minimum on the other hand if your second derivative is negative uh, when the first derivative is zero then you would have a point of maxima so let us uh, differentiate it so our derivative dt over dq is 4 minus 100 over q squared which we set to be equal to zero for minimizing. So this gives us that Q should be plus minus five. And from this, we can select Q equal to five. Why? Because negative value is unphysical. The product, the quantity of the product cannot be negative. It can only be positive. You can't have minus five products of something so negative value in q is unphysical so that gives us with only one option and clearly if we put it in second derivative the second derivative would be as follows and this at q equal to 5 
would be the following, which is positive. So indeed, Q is equal to 5 is the point of minima. So that's the answer. Coming to the next question. A container originally contains 10 liters of pure spirit. From this container, 1 liter of spirit is replaced with 1 liter of water. Subsequently, 1 liter of the mixture is again replaced with 1 liter of water and this process is repeated one more time. How much spirit is now left in the container? So, let us see how to solve this problem. So, what we have here is amount of spirit. So, amount of spirit left in the container after n such iterations of taking one liter out and replacing that one liter with uh, water would be given as follows. So 10 liters is what we started with and then we keep taking one liter out and replacing it with water and n is the number of times we do this. So n is number of times that one liter is replaced with water. And this term over here, this term, so 10 liters is the original amount that we start off with and this term right here is, sorry, so this term over here is the fraction, it's the fraction of spirit left, fraction of spirit left. For our case, n is equal to 3 because we are uh, doing this process three times. This process of taking one liter and replacing it with uh, water. So in this case, n is equal to 3. And what we have is the following, which is equal to 7.29 liters. So that's the correct option. Moving on, now we have two questions uh, based on English language. So as you know, in general aptitude, in gate exam, apart from physics questions, you also have uh, some English language based questions based on vocabulary, uh, some basic grammar. So we also discuss um, these English language questions, which are taken from the previous years, gate physics. Uh, examination. So let us look at the first one. Choose the grammatically incorrect sentence. So uh, could people just put in the chat box which is the grammatically incorrect sentence and which is the correct answer for this particular question. So I give you 30 seconds to select the answer to this question before we proceed further. So quickly, if people can type in the chat box what the correct answer is. I'll wait for some time till the time people uh, respond to me. Okay, someone is saying C is the correct options. Okay, C is the correct option. Someone is saying other. Uh, so can other people also select some option okay so correct answer is indeed c so c is the grammatically incorrect sentence over here what should have been the correct sentence 
this word over here instead of less it should have been lesser it's kind of like comparing things so the committee initially asked for a funding of 50 lakh rupees but later settled for a lesser sum that should have been the correct sentence and uh, that's not the case over here so it is uh, incorrect just writing less is not the correct uh, way to write the sentence okay so let's proceed which one of the following options is the closest in meaning to the word given below and the word given is mitigate so uh, these are the four options diminish divulge dedicate and denote so quickly if people uh, can respond to this question in 30 seconds i'll wait for some time uh, people can type in the chat box what the correct option is someone is saying a okay great so a is the correct option and as we all know oxford advanced learners dictionary is one of our favorite dictionaries to follow so according to oxford to mitigate something means to make something to make something less harmful or less serious less harmful or less serious and so on and synonym of this would be alleviate so instead of mitigate if they would have written alleviate that would have meant similar because it's a synonym and one example phrase is action to mitigate poverty. So diminish also means to reduce. Uh, so diminish and mitigate are close in meanings. So the correct option is diminish. Now that uh, completes the section on general aptitude for today. And today, the topic that we would be focusing on is quantum mechanics. So we have a few questions on quantum mechanics that we would look at. So the first one is, which of the following is an allowed wave function for a particle in a bound state? And we are given some options. We need to select which of these is a, a basically a proper wave function description. And n is a constant and alpha, beta are also constants which are positive. So again, if people can respond uh, before I start, if people can write in the chat box what they think would be a correct wave function and then I will discuss in detail as to how you can um, identify which wave function is an allowed wave function description. So quickly, if people can write in the chat box. Okay, wait, is my screen gone again? No, ma'am. Can you still see my screen or not? Uh, it is visible. Oh, I... no, it is not. No. Yeah, I, I'm, let me just see why it's going again and again So 
so i hope it is visible now back again right yes ma'am okay fine so uh, could someone just uh, type the answer what they feel is the answer for okay someone has already written fine so let us start by understanding how we can identify which wave function is the correct description so when we have a wave function so a wave function is a solution to the schrodinger's equation so an allowed solutions of the schrodinger equation are what is known as the wave function so what kind of wave functions are allowed well wave functions should be single value they should be finite and they should be continuous and this is true for not just the wave function and also for the gradient even gradient needs to be single valued finite and continuous then wave function should be bounded at large distances which means it cannot tend to infinity of uh, at large distances then or uh, if there is an infinite potential step if you have an infinite potential step then in that case or uh, the wave function is zero at the surface and finally wave functions should be square integrable uh, wave functions for a bound state need to be square integrable and square integrable means that this integral is finite and if this integral is equal to 1 then that means we have a normalized wave function so if this finite constant equal to 1 then we have what is known as a normalized wave function so let us look at the options so option a is undefined at r equal to 0 it is not finite so when you put r equal to 0 you get infinite value so that means a is not correct similarly uh, as r tends to negative infinity psi tends to negative infinity for part b so it is not bounded at large distances and d option number d if we look at then this is discontinuous at r equal to capital r why because r greater than r it is zero and r less than capital r it is some non zero finite constant so it is discontinuous at small r equal to capital r so that leaves us with option c which is indeed the only correct option and we will look at some plots for this wave function so if you look at if you focus along the x direction wave function along x direction that means if we look at psi x where y is equal to 0 and z equal to 0 then we have the following this is for option c we are looking at so that's the wave function along x direction and this is the corresponding plot we have so clearly from the plot you can see that uh, it is finite everywhere and it tends to zero when your x tends to plus minus infinity and it is continuous and it is definitely differentiable so this uh, part is fine similarly we can look at wave function wave function 
along either the y or z direction for option c that would be psi x equal to 0 y and let's say z equal to 0 that's nothing but an exponentially decaying function as given over here so this is e to the power minus y squared or minus z squared then you can have in two dimensions if you want to look setting x equal to 0 and y and z that is this is your wave function for part c when x is equal to 0 and the corresponding plot for this is given over here by this uh, 3d plot over here 3d surface plot so again you can see that it is finite it is bounded at large distances it is continuous and definitely differentiable so uh, from these plots also you can see that option c is the correct option so uh, this option is the only correct wave function so let's proceed further a particle of mass m is confined in the potential in the following potential it is given half m omega squared x squared for x greater than zero and uh, infinity for x less than equal to zero let the wave function of the particle be given by psi x equal to negative 1 over root 5 psi naught plus 2 over root 5 psi 1 where psi naught and psi 1 are the eigenfunctions of the ground state and the first excited state respectively the expectation value of the energy is and we have a bunch of options so we need to find out the expectation value of the energy now this is a half parabolic potential half parabolic and the traditional harmonic oscillator that we study traditional harmonic oscillator is for the full parabolic potential full parabolic potential means that it is half m omega squared x squared for all x belonging to real numbers and half parabolic potential is when it is uh, when the potential is half m omega squared x squared only for positive x and it is infinite otherwise so let us look at some plots for the traditional harmonic oscillator so here are some plots for wave function and the probability density psi squared taken from Wikipedia, Wikipedia's website on a quantum harmonic oscillator. So we are given some uh, eight wave functions over here. This is for the traditional harmonic oscillator that we study with the full parabolic potential. And the energy in this case, so this right here this plot is for the full parabolic potential and the energy for the full parabolic potential is given as follows e is equal to n plus half h cross omega where n is the uh, state that you have so n is zero for the ground state n is equal to 1 for the first excited state and so on. So n denotes the energy level. So this is for the full parabolic potential. Now coming to the half parabolic potential. So this is our question. Our question is based on half parabolic potential. And this is the potential given as follows. It is parabolic for x greater than 0 and it is infinite otherwise. So this is the case when we have infinite potential step. 
and if you remember from the previous question i had written that if you have infinite potential step then the wave function is zero at the surface so for infinite potential step your wave function is zero at the surface of that infinite potential step which means in this case wave function is zero at x equal to zero so this is the uh, infinite uh, this is the half parabolic potential this is the plot so you have half m omega squared x squared uh, for x greater than zero and infinity otherwise so this is the potential diagram so that means we need to select those wave functions those wave function solutions to the schrodinger equation of the full harmonic potential which satisfy the condition which satisfy the condition of it being zero at x equal to zero so the condition is psi x equal to zero is equal to zero so only those uh, wave functions which satisfy this condition would be the wave functions for the half parabolic potential so let us look at let us go back to our diagram and identify which of the wave functions are having zero at x equal to zero so you see this wave function is zero at x equal to zero so this is an allowed solution this wave function is zero at x equal to zero so this is also allowed solution similarly these solutions which are x equal to zero uh, which are zero at x equal to zero are the allowed solutions of the half parabolic potential that means that psi one of full parabolic potential is now my psi naught of half parabolic potential and psi 3 of full parabolic potential is psi 1 of half parabolic potential. So you see that this psi 1 is like the first uh, eigenstate psi 3 is like the first uh, second eigenstate so in every alternate eigenstate of the full parabolic potential is selected which are the solutions for the half parabolic potential so in that case my energy so let us look at what is our given state so our given state is this given state for the half parabolic potential given state is psi of x is equal to negative 1 over root 5 psi naught of x plus 2 over square root 5 psi 1 of x so that means expectation of the energy is negative 1 over root 5 squared times e naught plus 2 over root 5 squared times e1 so these are like the probability amplitudes of getting e naught and e1 so these coefficient squares would give me the probability of getting to that state so that is 1 over 5 times 3 by 2 h cross omega plus 4 over 5 times 7 by 2 h cross omega so e naught in our case is 3 by 2 h cross omega 
and e1 is 7 by 2 h cross omega uh, from this formula where n would be equal to 1 and 3 respectively. So this is nothing but 31 over 10 h cross omega. So the correct answer as someone rightly pointed out in the chat box is A which is 31 over 10 h cross omega. So coming over to the last question for today. So for a spin s particle in the eigenbasis of s uh, squared and sx, the expectation value of sx squared is given as we need to find out which of the options is correct. So we need to find out the expectation of sx squared. So let us start solving the question. So in this question, we will make use of the ladder operators. So s plus is sx plus i s y. These are the ladder operators, raising and lowering operators. So from this, what you get is sx is half of s plus plus s minus. So sx squared can then be replaced by this raising and lowering operators. This is Sx squared. Expectation value. So simplifying it, basically opening up the bracket. Note that S plus and S minus operators do not commute. So you can't just write 2 S plus S minus over here. You need to write S plus S minus plus S minus S plus because these are non-commuting operators. And let us write down what the action of S plus and S minus 2. So S plus, this is the action of S plus on the state. So as the name suggests, it is the ladder operator and it is raising operator. So this will raise your state by 1. M goes to M plus 1 for S plus. And if you have S minus, then your M will go to M minus 1. And this is the corresponding coefficient for it. So from this, what we get is that expectation of S plus squared is 0 and expectation of S minus squared is also 0. Why? This is because that the states are orthogonal. So because the states are orthogonal, these terms over here would be, the overlap would be 0. So therefore, our expectation of Sx squared is given as follows. That's because s plus squared and s minus squared, their expectation are 0. And this term right here is nothing but 2 times s squared minus s z squared. You can verify this. So this is the expression. So what we get is the following. And this in turn would then give us the following 
result. And why? Because this s into s plus 1 comes from the expectation of s squared and this m squared comes from the expectation of sz squared. So expectation of just sz would have given you simply m and if it is sz squared that gives you m squared. So the correct option is option number A. So these were some questions on general aptitude, quantum mechanics, and one question from electromagnetic theory we discussed again from the previous lectures that was just to understand, uh, just to see a brief overview of the Levy Semita symbols. So that's all for today's session. Uh, in the next session, again, we will look at some uh, general aptitude questions and uh, some mathematical physics questions. So that is all for today. And I'm extremely sorry for all the technical glitches that uh, we had today. This was not there earlier. Uh, I don't know why today there were some problems with the network and with the connection. So as a result of it, I was not able to connect my device to share the screen. But hopefully after fixing it, it was fine. So I'm really sorry for having wasted uh, so much of the initial time uh, on trying to fix this network issue. Hopefully this does not uh, crop up again.